Come on, little. So today I'm out here with three of my best friends in the whole wide world. We all basically grew up together. This man right here, Mr. Michael Highfield, he's an exquisite wing shooter and, uh, and guide out here in the Pacific Northwest. They actually just nominated on um, the top two wing shooting guides in the entire country by Orvis. So pretty cool, I think we're gonna build him a plaque, maybe make him a trophy. We got Mr. Chris Blozier right behind us. He's a uh, very infamous man, famous fly fisherman, famous kayaker. And also, oh, oh, little, 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 little. Well, a little ruined that one. I was a Chris Blosier, the owner of Blosier Whitewater Fishing. Uh, we can way back guys together forever. And of course, we got Silver Fox himself, Mr. Phil Black back there. Now, this bird hunting is something that I've done for a long time. And today, we're up here at Sage Canyon Outfitters, which is a public hunting spot out here in this local area. So if you guys ever want to come out and check this out, and you like what you see here today, be sure to get involved and ask for a more beautiful day. Let's try to kill something. Oh, here it goes. This feels right. He's going, he's going, he's gonna crash, he's gonna crash. Yeah! Oh! Good boy, Mane. Woohoo! Oh, so, what we have here is a beautiful ringneck pheasant. This is actually our first time ever getting to hunt these here on State Fishy. These things live all throughout North America from the Great Plains all the way here to Oregon where we're at. Meal number one in the bag. Well, redemption is made. Told you I knew how to shoot. Almost everybody, bad shooting. Those things were at a really good distance. The dog found them, kicked them up. We got shots, quite a few shots. Yeah, this gun. This is the birds that we got in the last episode, you guys. These are a chucker. Absolutely gorgeous specimen of one. That's gonna be tasty. Now it's amazing the habitat this place has because there's pheasants and shuckers everywhere. Every hunter has success. And I tell you, it's a quality operation. Yeah, here we go. This looks good. Oh, my boy! That's my boy! What a hail Mary from the man himself! <laughs> oh, there we go. Smoked him! Atta boy, boys! We're gonna feed the whole village! So one thing like this really comes down to having super, super good dogs. Out here in the West, there's actually a lot of competitions even where they have bird dog competitions. These dogs have to go out into a, a thousand acre parcel of land, find the bird, hold point, and stay on that bird until the hunter gets it. And their time is dictated on the champion. So when whoever finds that bird fastest and holds it the entire time, that's the one that also feels the champion, which gives them insanely, insanely strong breeding rights. And winning a championship like that is a feat. Michael is one of the guys around here that has really taken this series. So it's cool to see, it's cool to see friends that you grow up with, succeeding in what they're doing, following their dreams, and having a good time with their lives. No, not yet. Not yet. Okay, now. Yeah, we found the one that I thought I missed. I eventually caught up to it. Cool. Look, man, come on. Oh, good girl. Good girl. Good girl. <laughs> She's out of here. <laughs> uh, oh. <laughs> well, that should do it. There's no sense in over harvesting this wild ring torch like this here today. So, we got enough food. Let's get the heck out of here. Will you guys show me how to pelt one of them out? Will you pelt me? Bust these hips out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Follow this here breastbone. Here we go. 
Now, a lot of you out there have probably asked yourself in the past, you know, I wonder if Jordan was born in a barn. No, but I do stay in one sometimes. This is one of my best friends in the entire world, Amanda's house. It's a completely converted barn inside. It's super cool. A lot of fun times have been had here. And one more fun time is about to be had again. Let's go do it. I'm home. Check this place out. Super cool barn dominium. And I am delighted to say that this is home for the night. We have our pheasant in the fridge. She's looking good. You can see how it's starting to already tenderize too. That stuff just starts to fall apart. I have been super hungry for this now ever since I started talking about doing this recipe. So without further ado, let's get to cooking. So we're gonna get some of these feathers off, get a little bit of the blood off, and then we're gonna put this thing in a salt water brine. Now it's important to, to let any meat age. You never wanna eat any kind of meat, whether it be birds like this or any sort of red meat, the same day that you kill it. You need time for it to tenderize, uh, kind of age a little bit, and then calm down. Basically, it's very tense from the whole process of being processed. So we're gonna get all this meat cleaned up in a salt water bath, and then on to our arts and craft project. I'm gonna lay in salt. I'm gonna go pretty heavy, you guys might freak out here, but this is part of the process. So, the goal is the rest of the day to go catch some fish, obviously. What else are we gonna do after we just got done pheasant hunting? There's still daylight, I wanna go catch a trout. So what we're gonna do with the pheasant feathers that we just killed is build a trout fly. And this is kind of a fly that you see me use a lot. We're not doing, this is a custom pattern. We'll call it, I don't know, you can't name a fly before, before it's tied, that's a rule. So let's tie this fly and name it together. So I'm gonna wrap my thread all the way to the end of the fly. Basically to this point of the hook. You don't want to wrap it all the way down the shank because it's useless. You're not going to use that space. So I have, it's right, right there by the point of my hook so that it's not going to cut my line while I'm trying to tie this bad boy. First thing anybody needs is a piece of tail. Ooh, that's nice. Okay, what I'm going to start with is actually, ironically enough, a piece of the tail feather. I'm going to reverse tie that right onto the base of the hook. strip off the side that I don't want my undesired side of the of the feather just like that wrap my material or wrap my thread back up towards the head of the jig and as I lay this each time I'm going to make sure that that fiber of that feather is pointed back towards the fish's mouth Now for my dubbing, and this is a tricky little part. I think a lot of part people don't know exists in fly tying when you first start, but it's called dubbing your line. So you take a small little tough, basically, I don't know, artificial dog hair, wrap it on your line by licking your fingers, twisting it onto the hook, rolling it up, do one wrap just to kind of hold some of it down, twist it on even tighter. Same thing each time. Next is my final hackle. The hackle is actually the part on the fly's neck that's gonna create some body to it. It's gonna give it like a hackle, like on the back of a dog's back. So we're gonna grab a very short feather. You can see the fibers on this feather are very, very short. They got some nice color to them. Very, very beautiful pheasant. So you hear that thing right there? Once again, as we wrap slowly towards the front, I'm going to keep pulling the fibers of that feather back. Mm. Beautiful. She came together very nicely. I'm gonna finish this with just a little bit more of this dubbing around the neck to kinda make a nice, sexy finish. One more little finish, more tight, and there it is. I think we'll call it Dos Fisantes. Let's go, bud. Let's go. Come on, let's go. Go ahead and back. Yeah, boy. That's my boy, little. All right, my fishy friend. We have entered the dragon's lair. Let's see if the old Dos Fisante can do some work. Here it goes. Dos Fisante.
kind of cool how this ends up turning into being kind of a food chain challenge. You know, we go out, use the dogs, use our wits and accurate shooting to get some pheasants, which then we will enjoy as dinner and use the feathers at the same time to come up here and get our surf for our turf. Pretty cool little situation here. I cannot wait for tonight's recipe though. It's gonna be absolutely delicious. Absolutely delicious. Come on, baby. Come on, come to Papa. I know you're in here. I know you big guys are in here. Oh, come on, I can feel it already. Just that line swimming away. Give him the old schwappy poo. Give me a schwappy for your pappy. Oh, the dog. Oh, got him, got him, fish on, fish on. Oh, he nailed it. Yeah, baby, oh yeah, not the giant, not the dragon we were looking for, but that's okay. We got our first, oh, we got our first fish on the old dose for Sante. Woohoo! Yes. Beauty, dude. Oh, I love it. What a gratifying feeling. It's cool how a little bit of imagination, a little bit of hard work, and some persistence will pay off. There it is, Dos Vasante's first fish of the day. Let's get him back. Later, buddy. Okay, they like it. Let's see if there's any bigger ones that are hungry. That was our dog. That was Schlappy's Pappy dog. Yep, yep. Pappy got a Schlappy. Oh, I love fly fishing, everybody. I, I'm something to be said here. I've preached it a lot, like on the Addicted Forum uh, and in different places, but you know what? Anything that makes you happy, you should go out and do. And I tell you, a lot of people have a stigma against fly fishing or they don't think that it's fun. I think it's too hard to get out and try, but you know what? It's not the most expensive sport to get into. Like most people try to make you feel. It is so much fun. And again, it's gratifying. Fish you in, uh, going out, harvesting an animal, using his body, using its feathers uh, to tie up and sit down and use your imagination and tie up a lure or a fly to go out and have a great day like this. I mean, there's nothing quite like it, especially you get a kid into something like that. Somebody who's kind of lost their love for fishing or lost their pathway and finding fun in the outdoors and it can really spark your imagination and regain uh, the fun and the excitement in something like this about his fishing. Okay, right here should be some. So I'm gonna fish from here back to the dock. Oh, there he is, got him. Oh, got him. Oh, it's a good one. That's the one I was looking for. That's the one I was looking for. That's the one I've been looking for, everyone. Oh man, I just about fell off the damn kayak with the hook set. Oh, it's a good fish too. Oh God. Oh, yes. Yes. Dos pesantes for the win. Oh, wow. Oh, geez, he's gonna kill. He's gonna sink the camera boat. Oh, that's a beauty. Look at that thing. Oh, it's a beauty. Look at that trout. Oh, that's what dreams are made of right there. Wow. What a beauty. Those festantes sticking out of the front of his mouth. That's cool. How gratifying, guys. All right. What a beauty. Later, guy. We did it. We did it, my fishy friends. We got a fish. A nice one, two nice ones, and it ain't over yet. Let's keep trying. Oh, come on. Oh, oh my God. Soft lipped little guy. Oh, I felt him swimming with it. I felt him swimming right with it. Clean with it, rock with it. Well, a successful venture it has been. I'm turning it into a little chicken here. I'm cold, I'm hungry. Let's head back to the house. I got a surprise for you guys. Here goes the magic. This is gonna be absolutely delicious. We're making poppers, everyone. And I'm gonna do something absolutely that's gonna blow your mind. I'm gonna make a special cream cheese for these. I'm not just going plain cream cheese because we're not plain kind of people. But first off, we're just gonna start with a little bit of Pontac into our little chunks of meat that I've done. You guys saw that on the time lapse about how I was kind of taking the ends off of each of that, each one of those breasts, making them into these nice little steaks, basically. Basically, I just try to shape them so that they're gonna fit good inside the uh, jalapeno popper. Nice and covered, I don't wanna to go too crazy on it. Next, I'm just gonna go 
with a good dash of the hippie cowboy cover that pretty good and again this stuff does not have very much salt in it alongside that i know it's finishing salt but this is going to add a really really nice flavor so alder smokes finishing salt and go a little bit of that in there oh you can instantly smell that get all these nice and covered up Ooh, that smoked salt really lit that up just now with a hippie cowboy it's got a lot of garlic in it so it's like a smoked garlic smell it's gonna have a great flavor we're gonna set those aside let them marinate for a little bit okay now on to the cream cheese trick i'm gonna go just another scoop of pontac for flavor nice little probably half tablespoon of the ghost cream a little bit of the animal style and we're gonna chop some parsley nice and fine Ooh, that's nice and fresh. And we're gonna go with about half a shallot. Now, mix it all together. Bacon time. Okay, I'm gonna take out a handful of bacon here. And normally, I will actually take one side uh, and either shorten it up a little bit and save this. But we we'll wanna see what these things wrap like. Each jalapeno usually will be different in how you actually stuff them. So let's go ahead and get one of them, a little test run going, and we'll see how long our bacon needs to be. God, I can't hold on to anything. Got the drops. Okay, nice healthy chunk of meat. Bacon, wrap it tight. There it is, a little jalapeno bacon pheasant cocoon. Wonder what kind of butterfly it's gonna turn into. And now we wait. Got a couple more additives here. I'm gonna take some of Amanda's pear jam. I ate some of this earlier on toast and just about lost my mind. And I said, you know what that's gonna go perfect on? Poppers. A little bit of the ghost scream on each one. Okay, well, there's some more appetizers busted out. Some more very, um, I'd say, earthly and organic things. Amanda's green pepper jelly. A little bit of the stuffing mix that we made for inside the jalapenos. Get right out of town. That's a done popper right there. Slapping. Well, from the sky to the table, I don't think these things look too bad. For the sake of my own taste buds, I'm not gonna try it yet. For one time, for once, I'm not gonna bite into something too early. I was really in love with the first one I wrapped, so that's the one that I'm gonna try first. Oh, cut it in a couple chunks here. Look at how nicely that's working. That's one of my biggest pet peeves is food that falls apart and you know what? This time, that's not our food. Look at that. Cheesy, crispy, jalapeno -y. Mm. You know, I didn't think it was gonna be bad, so definitely met expectations. For all my fishy friends, it is time to go feast. What an amazing day it's been. Saw some good friends, and I have to say, Time like these that we don't get enough in our lives to spend time with our friends, especially when they're friends who have gone out and accomplished their dreams and are doing the things that they love, just like my boys, Michael and Chris. Until next time, everybody, you all stay fishy. We'll see you out there.